Hi everybody, welcome to HJ Goes Live and Modern Barber Goes Live. Today I'm joined by Tom Chapman, founder of the Lions Barber Collective, and we're going to be talking about Mental Health Awareness Week and this year's theme, which is nature, and finding out how that is going to boost both hairdressers and barbers' mental well-being. Hello, Tom. Hello, Charlotte. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Loving your background. Beautiful skills. <laughs> it's either that or this tiny hotel room that I'm in. <laughs> This is probably a bit better. <laughs> and I'm in the office. Uh, this isn't my house. I don't have a very <laughs> <laughs> minimal <laughs> house. <laughs> um, so can you kind of give us a quick overview of the five ways that hairdressers and barbers can connect with nature without going into too many details? Just a little overview. Well, there's, so there's like, I suppose, from my point of view, there's the five key steps of mental well-being, which is connect with others, be physically active, learn new skills, give to others and being present. Um, and I think it's about trying to, we all know that nature is good for our mental health. And sometimes it's hard to get out into it because it's actually not feeling like it, but we all feel better when we come back in from it. So my point of view is like, could we potentially do those five things within nature? So we're kind of two birds with one stone. Cool. Um, and do you think it's kind of hard for hairdressers and barbers to get into that mindset of like, I've got to spend more time in nature. How can I? I'm in the salon all day, blah, blah, blah. Do you ever come up against that? Yeah, I mean, I think from my point of view, like it's, it is difficult because you are, I mean, we're, we're very bad at taking breaks. We're very bad at taking lunch time. You know, we don't do that. We work through and we fit people in whilst other people's colours developing. Marcus. Stuff. and that's what we that's just what the way we do it um but i think it's really important just to get out and see the sky is a really is a really good way of doing that take a step out and um and just take that little break um whether that be i don't know five minutes or ten minutes or even just 20 seconds go outside look up at the sky and breathe and take that in because actually you know that looking up at the sky can actually put into perspective because it's so huge, it's so big, it into perspective all the little problems, the problems that we consider big, the stressful situations that we're in. So actually by going up and look, going out, the, just walking out the front door and going outside there, people often think to be in nature, you need to go on a hike in the Pennines or something, but actually it's all around us all the time. So true. So is looking at the sky one of your five ways or shall we get into... No, I would say, Joe, I would say looking at the sky is one of the things that we can definitely do. Um, it's actually, um, there was a, a lady called Sarah, uh, Sarah Conn, PhD, and I've got a little bit of, she says that being aware of the sky helps to put stressful situations into a larger context, noticing the huge space outside ourselves can help create a sense of space within ourselves. So watching the sky and the changes that steadily occur in it can give people a sense that their own feelings move the same way. So essentially, you know, like watching those things move on and 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 go away from us, yeah. That's so it's kind of a really good way of of doing putting, that, yeah. Putting yeah. things into perspective, right? Yeah, putting things in perspective, and like you say, things can, you know, we have we put that into like a context of we have storms, we have cloudy days, but actually above the clouds, the sky is always blue, you know. That is so nice. And I'm just looking at your background now. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you perfectly demonstrated <laughs> what's above the clouds. <laughs> clouds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what other tips do you recommend to particularly hair professionals to get into nature? Well, I think, you know, like I said, going into nature, going outside and, and listening, listening to what's around you, taking it in. Um, I suppose that's part of the being present part of the five steps of well-being so really really just going out and listening to what's happening there's, I mean there's birds everywhere listening to bird song is really good listening to the wind um and just I mean this is something we can go into our gardens we can go outside of our salons we can go into these different places and just take that moment and listen and there's a, another little bit I wanted to say it said that scientists at the University of uh, Surrey have been studying the uh, Restorative, 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 uh, easy yeah. term to say, uh, benefits of birdsong, uh, testing whether it really does improve our mood. And they discovered that all of the natural sounds, bird songs, and calls were those most often cited as helping people recover from stress and allowing them to restore and refocus their attention, which is amazing, isn't it, really, when you think about that? Oh, yeah. 
and that's, that's, that's resources available to all of us most of us anyway there's birds around us all the time isn't there or you can just I suppose put your headphones in listen to the bird song but that kind of counteracts the nature thing here doesn't it and I guess the great thing about nature is it's free <laughs> <laughs> it is free. It is free, and I think we're very lucky. I think that's something that we've. I think we've realised in lockdown is that we we because we couldn't go and do all those fun uh, things that we have to pay for normally. We've had to go and enjoy those uh, the, the the free things. So I think that's I think that's one of the sort of silver linings of this lockdown is actually taking advantage of what's around us and getting out and going for a walk. So you've said this to me before about because um, I always go on walks, um, but I listen to my podcast. And then I did, I did a walk after we spoke when I didn't wear my headphones and I was listening to the bird song and some traffic, let's be honest. And I was like, this is kind of bad. Like, why have I never, I haven't gone on a walk for ages without that like background noise of a narrative going on. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. I liked it. It does make a big difference. And I think I, um, I, I find that as well. I think just having that walk and combining that with listening to something, it's, it takes you out of the, um, it puts you in the moment, it takes you out of this this rat race that we're in because we feel like we've always got to be learning, listening to audio books or listening to music or listening to other people just in our brains, you know? Um, and actually, we, if we take a bit of time to clear that out just for, just for a minute, <laughs> yeah, because it's just constant, isn't it? All the time, content everywhere. I, I get content overload and it's like, I'm sure you're, you and everyone watching is the same it's like listen to this oh have you heard this yeah listen, listen, <laughs> listen, this book. listen to this podcast listen to it yeah so. sometimes you just need the birds <laughs> the bird podcast yeah exactly <laughs> um so what else what else is um, your nature tips so something that i've i've realized i'm very lucky because i live close to the sea so water is something that i've found is really healing for me and i've taken walks and i've actually uh uh, recently, quite taken a longer a longer route to work. And I've walked down the harbour and along the seafront and all that, and just taking that in. And it's very it's something very um, calming about that. And I think getting around water is really important. And because of I was looking into that, and because of that, we found this. It says that water is considered the elixir and source of life. It covers more than seventy percent of the Earth's surface, makes up nearly seventy percent of our bodies, and constitutes for over seventy percent of our hearts and brains. This deep biological connection has been shown to trigger an immediate response in our brains when we're near water. In fact, the mere sight and sound of water can induce a flood of neurochemicals that promote wellness, increase blood flow to the brain and heart and induce relaxation. Ooh, that's really compelling. It is pretty good, isn't it? I mean, and I, and I honestly believe that. And we're very, we're really, really lucky. We've moved our office, Alliance office. We had a very, um, it was very tiny. We had a very plain view of a wall <laughs> at the other side and we've just moved to one of the front offices in the same building and we can see the harbour and I'll tell you the difference in that is incredible just seeing the water if I'm having a stressful day or I'm getting too caught up in emails and the three screens that I've got going on or just stop and just look out or even just go outside for a walk and see it in real life uh, rather than in, well, in real life actually face to face without going looking through a uh, window pane but it's I think it's something that's really really important something that we uh, if we live near water the lake doesn't have to be in the sea it could be anything yeah you're blessed aren't you if you've got oh, that opportunity yeah. and do you um do you rate the benefits of like water immersion have you got any any doctor quotes on <laughs> i haven't <laughs> that's, that's, that's the last of my that's the last of my good quotes that I found, <laughs> unfortunately or, but... um, I'm sorry about that. Anecdotes. No, it's fine. Let me no, I, I think you know, there's a lot of stuff about immersion, isn't there? And I was, yeah. um, uh, I was talking to a friend about his. He's got. He does hot tub deliveries and stuff like that. And he said yeah. because of lockdown, everyone's at home. Everyone's got grants. They've been buying a lot of hot tubs because they're not going anywhere. He said there's like a 12 month waiting list and all this sort of stuff. Okay. And he said they range from ridiculous money to very cheap like he said but the real the real trick the real thing about it is the water immersion that's the real healing part of it is the water immersion he said that's that's what does it that's what makes you feel so good when you're in there and also you know you know you don't always have to get a hot tub you no no you don't have to get a hot tub but it was just interesting no, I did the cold yeah. water immersion of um oh, no. DIY yeah I've done that a couple of times <laughs> ice, ice buckets yeah lovely ice bath we just jump in the sea where I am. It's probably colder than ice bar. 
yeah oh my gosh do you go do you go to the sea swimming regularly i do um i do go swimming i i tell you when the weather's better this time last year through lockdown i um and the weather's calm i'd walk down at five o'clock in the morning and go um paddle boarding by myself oh, and there's no one else around it was beautiful that's really lovely falling quite a bit but it was still beautiful so you've mentioned there um being in nature by yourself I'm just predicting that you might have a tip about <laughs> nature with other people. Yeah, so that's that's my uh, my my other next one actually was connecting with others. So connecting with others is so important. We I think as a hair and beauty industry, we are and barbering. That's part of what we do every day, and that's part of the reason why lockdown was so hard for us because we connect with 10, 20 people a day, and then all of our staff and all of their clients and all of you know it's it's constantly connecting with others. So we were shut down from that. But also remember that that's work. We are connecting with others, but that's work. It's great to get out and experience these things in nature with others because you can go, <clears throat> going for a walk by yourself is fantastic, but going for a walk with somebody else and having that connection because shared experiences are so good, shared experiences and memories. Um, and I found, uh, I found that personally with my work traveling around, going to lots of different countries and working, it's fantastic and it's experience for me, but you don't, we, don't have some, we don't have someone to share it with it's half the experience isn't it and i think a lot of it is about sharing it so if we can share experience with others connect with others we're tribal we love to belong and i think finding our finding our tribe and experience in that outside in nature and there's loads of ways which we can do that playing sport going for walks camping you know all these amazing things that we can go and do um do them together makes a big difference um shout out to picnics so basically uh, the yeah. hot spot of the summer right <laughs> um is there something to be said as well for um walking and talking because i've kind of heard a lot of research about you open up more when you're walking and talking with someone than when you do you know sat next to them or in front of them in a more confrontational kind of atmosphere. yeah very true and i think you know this um especially with men there's been a, a lot of studies i was uh, at, uh on a webinar the other day with lots of other mental health social entrepreneurs and also charities and uh samaritan's done a study recently and it was talking about men and men did not like generally talking to structured organized you know like doctors yeah. therapists anything where it was the records kept but men preferred talking and doing so talking and doing was always easier so talk, there's a great group in Bristol called Dudes and Dogs and they all go for dog walks together and they go and hang out and they just talk about things. We used to do uh, lion's walks down in Torquay uh, where we get together and just go for a walk and the, the there's something about doing and I think most people can relate to the the car journey with a with a friend and you have a road trip and you end up talking about all the lots of things that you probably would never have spoken about before. Um, I think there's something about that. Maybe it's the pressures off Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you don't have that confrontation as you stated yeah. so much so. I always think when you're side by side to someone, you I, I open up more. I don't have the eye contact. Yeah. Almost. Like you sort of do, but you can be your but that's why that's why hairdressers and barbers are so good at are so in, in the best position for this and why they can help so many people because we have indirect eye contact through a mirror. Yeah. Most of the time we're looking at their head because we need to be concentrating. If you're doing a full head of foils you should probably be looking at the hair rather than looking in the mirror um but we're also very intimate with them we're touching their head and there's a level of trust there so that's yeah. why it's such a perfect position really the sweet spot isn't it, it is um, so what's next of the the five ways what are we on number three well, we're on number five, and we've done four, we've done one, two, three, four, and this is number five. Well, that's um, never been my strong point. <laughs> well, well, that's why I'm not a colorist. That's why I went into cutting when I was at Sony and Guy. I didn't think like all the maths, all the, <laughs> all the numbers just confused me. Everyone would have ended up with a base one, nice and easy. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, so the last one I wanted to talk about was just um, learning new skills, and that's something that um, is part of the five steps to mental well-being. Um, and something again that I think we do in the hair industry pretty well because we're always learning new skills. Skills we're always learning new. I mean, you uh, look on Instagram, the amount of men having this mullet haircut again. Oh my gosh! You no, know, it's it's phenomenal. And you know, I, it was flashbacks to me when I started in the industry 
back in 2001, two, something like that. Um, and uh, it was very fashionable then to have the men to have this mullet -y kind of look going on. Um, so it was very similar. But for a lot of people, I suppose this is the first time they've experienced that shape of cutting hair. So they're learning, if whether they realise it or not, they're learning slightly different, combining different skills. But if we can get out in nature and do those things, yeah, that's that's even better. So again, when you're doing these walks, you know, we talked about listening to the birds, learning about what the bird, what what birds are, what different birds are, what different bird sounds are. Um, we've actually been doing, me and my wife doing a little bit of foraging recently. So learning about like making nettle tea, what the benefits of nettle tea are, um, different different things you can and can't eat and just going out and trip, seeing what's about. And so yeah. I say we're quite lucky because there's nature around us, but there's nature everywhere, isn't it? I mean, stinging nettles grow everywhere, don't they? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> but there's huge benefits from it as well for like your liver and yeah, loads of really, huge benefit Ooh, at the right time um and it was actually really nice i was just like really we're gonna drink nettle tea yeah it's, i don't know but I, actually yeah, it's really good it was really nice and um yeah i think there's some interesting things we can learn about nature and how we can learn how nature can benefit us and how we can benefit nature and how we can look after each other because i think we've uh, we've kind of forgotten about it and abused it for so long if we can learn a little bit about it, we can make a big difference, can't we, for ourselves and for uh, the future of our future generations and for us mentally and, and physically as well. I love that, what we can learn from nature, what, you know, we can help each other, that kind of symbiotic relationship. That's really nice to remember. And I don't know if um, you ever feel like when you're sort of telling people to go out for a walk or go foraging, there's something that's almost like, do people think it's a, like a little patronizing then they do it and then they realize actually oh that actually really does help i think it's in, i think it's interesting it's that self it's that it's that uh feeling of sort of i know it's not complete self-sufficiency but it's like wow i know how to i know that i can eat that and i know that because people would have had to do that and we've just become it's too it's very hard to do that because things crops don't grow sometimes and sometimes it's not reliable and that's why we've gone down the route of have a supermarket soon and that's why it works because it's easy we can go and do that and then it means we can concentrate on developing technology and working and family life and rather than out at foraging all day for a couple handful of berries but it's nice to know that those sort of things are out there and also just learning about learning about nature and learning about what we're doing to it and how to yeah. how to look after it makes you feel good as well it just makes you feel good because you're almost you're almost giving back to nature and giving to everybody yet to come as well um so I think, yeah, I think that's a really good thing as well for us mentally and also for us physically and also for everybody, isn't it, as a, as a, uh, a global community. Definitely. Um, and so aside from foraging, how else do you personally connect with nature, Tom? How do I connect with nature? So um, I think it's really important to get out there and, and I walk to work every day. I, make, I could drive down there, but I make sure I walk to work every day um, and I take my time and I walk. And I, I try and be mindful whilst I'm present, whilst I'm walking. So my first start of my walk, I walk down the drive and then I walk on it's a private road part. So it's like a private roads never looked after, are they? So it's basically gravel. So you can hear the gravel as you're walking down and you walk back onto the road and I walk down the stone steps that are worn and I kind of take, make, I, I kind of mentally, I can mentally see that journey that I'm going for because I'm trying to take everything in whilst I'm going down there and I walk along the seafront walk along the harbour and I look out to sea and I take a moment I spot see if there's any birds there and I just try and make I try and take probably 20 I could probably walk it in 10 minutes but I try and take 20 30 minutes to do that and walk around walk on the harbour and take some time and stop and look at the water and look at so that's my that sort of daily thing um but at the weekends, we do try and do something where we will go and take the boys and we will either go to Dartmoor or we will go to um, Holden Forest or we'll go somewhere and just be in that, be in nature for a little bit. And sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes I don't want it when I've had a really busy week. I think, oh my God, it's Sunday. Can I just lie horizontally on the floor face down, please, for the day? Um, but actually, once you get back, you just feel invigorated and you feel energised. It's very, uh, it's almost like earthing as well. You know, it's good to take take your socks and shoes off and actually have your feet on the on the ground. That's very cool. Um, I like that concept of forest bathing, which I was introduced to a couple of years ago. Is that something that you would say you do? 
forest bathing. I'd like you to explain it a little bit more to me because I haven't heard of the forest bathing concept. I think it's basically what you were describing. <laughs> going Brown. into the forest yeah. <laughs> and immersing yourself and being fully present. Yeah. Yeah, essentially that. I mean, that's, I mean, there's something just really special about just being in nature and i mean just looking up realize that looking at the trees looking at every and realizing you know we're the only we're the only things on this planet that realize that we try and manipulate nature yeah everything else lives within it and in harmony with it and you know and, and it's a part of a circle of life and we're just like no we don't want that there we're going to build this and this is much better and we're going to try and manipulate the way the rivers go and we're going to do you know um which is incredible and in what we've achieved it's amazing but at the same time it's like sometimes i think we do need to because we still have those primal instincts i think and um as some of those quotes i mentioned the impact of the sky the impact of water we are part of nature yeah and it's that awe inspiring kind of moments that they cut bring out in us where all you can do is just go <laughs> and it's so beautiful and it's ever changing and it's so i mean you think about some of your favorite memories a lot of my favorite memories from being younger or being out doing things and being you know in in parks or glens or swimming or you know in the sea or the beach and i think there's a reason for that totally um and if someone said to you i don't have time for nature what would you say back to them i would say you are part of nature and I think it's not it's not hard to step out especially in the hair industry step out into step out into the uh, street step out into the back room whatever out the back room whatever it may be into the alley behind your salon or whatever it may be and and just look up at the sky and take a deep breath close your eyes and listen to what's going on around you and re just pausing realizing what's going on in you as well yeah and nature's always got time for you right <laughs> If we look after it, if we look after it, it will always be there for us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the t-shirt that I'm wearing today. It's very um, lovely. Which I don't know if people can see, but oh, which, where is it? there's a lion here. And then on my sleeve is my mind because I'm wearing my mind on my sleeve. <laughs> um, Tom, I'm completely butchering that description. Can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're a very good job. You're a great model, honestly, a great model. And like I said, uh, I said before we come live, you've got one, but I haven't got one yet. So I, you know, I mean, it's a uh, favoritism here, isn't it? Really, um, no privilege. <laughs> so the the idea with your uh, wear your mind on your sleeve, but we uh, so if anyone's watched the 1.7 million pound haircut documentary, you know about Paul, and Paul is the first life that was saved by Lions Barber Collective. It kind of you know, cemented the idea in me that this could work and also um, it was a massive point for me because I lost a friend from our friendship group but we managed to save a friend from our friendship group from that and he is a, a clothing entrepreneur he does stitching and printing and he has a he has a, a clothing company where he makes stuff for other people called Humane Made so all the clothing is uh, it's all basically like vegan it's you know it's self-sustainable it's all really great clothing so it's really good quality um, and I, and I, we just sort of had a conversation about stuff and he said I'd love to do something with to help with mental health and help fund some training so after back and forth we decided to come up with a clothing line which is 100% non-profit so nobody takes anything out of it but when you buy the t-shirts it's just literally the cost of the t-shirts to be made um, and we decided to call it raw materials um, raw as in raw um, <laughs> and uh, the idea is that you will buy this is our campaign t-shirt wear your mind on your sleeve and the idea is that this t-shirt by wearing it this, this symbol will become a um, just a, a sign that people realize you know like if somebody if you see somebody wearing the same football team shirt that you support or a band t-shirt that you love that band and you see them in a pub and you see them you instantly get that nod of respect it's if you like yeah. And that's it. And that's what we're trying to create with this. So this, the idea of this raw materials brand is it will be worn by survivors, sufferers and supporters of mental health without plastered all over it about being this or it's not okay to be not okay or whatever that may, whatever phrases are on there. It's something a little bit more subtle that someone can wear with pride and we can kind of build a, build a relationship and all the funds from it will go back into training more barbers and hairdressers around mental wellbeing. Um, and I'm sorry to sound like an influencer, but this t-shirt fits amazing 
feels really good. And I have been on the hunt for a white t-shirt for a very long time. So it, just from a purely fashion point of view, I'm a very happy customer. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you're very happy. I'll let you know what mine's like when I finally receive it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, it's been something we, we, I've seen the samples. We really, we did try to make sure that the, pro the product was really nice. It's good quality. Yeah. Um, it was ethically sourced. It's all, you know, sustainable, vegan. It's all, you know, it's really good quality stuff. Um, good quality. I it's, it's yeah. taken about six months to get this, uh, get this sort of set up and running and going through and planning things. And, and Paul has just been amazing. And he's, um, he actually, you know, the first life saved, he's been through a load of stuff recently as well. But this is really, you know, it's just amazing to be doing this with him and having an impact and hopefully with people buying this t-shirt i always wanted to make sure the lions bible collective and anything related to that the funds came through um a, a feeling of value as opposed to begging for money so it's something that you can have that's really good quality you wear it with pride you're supporting others breaking down taboos and stigmas and also supporting us to train more hair professionals amazing and we'll put the link um in our facebook comments yeah somewhere the rest of the website i don't know it's all back to front it's hard isn't it i was like <laughs> my arm keeps disappearing <laughs> <laughs> like a 90 like 80 sci-fi movie <laughs> love it um wow that seems like a perfect time to end it on as you disappear into the blue sky behind you <laughs> i can't disappear <laughs> just my arm <laughs> Thank you so much, Charlotte, for giving me the time today. And I just want to say to everybody, if you, like, I know you've been really busy going back to work, you've been full on, try and take wellness breaks, try and book out little 10 minute breaks throughout the day, even if you run over and it, you use it as time so you're not running late, because that's horrendous running late. I hate that when you're running late and the next client turns up and you've still got this one. So just try and book 10 minutes out every now and then. And if that means you get five minutes or 10 minutes a day to go outside and step out, and I'm going to give everybody who's watching this homework. I want you to have spend 30 minutes tonight doing whatever you want as long as it's not nothing to do with this kind of see it this thing as long as it's nothing to do with this thing put it away and I don't know, go for a walk or sleep and listen to some music or whatever whatever it may be just put it down and spend 30 minutes for you tonight God, thank you tom i will do <laughs> <laughs> i'm probably gonna go to bed in a minute after the day aren't i <laughs> It's been so lovely and thank you for your valuable advice as ever. Um, and I hope everyone finds it really relatable and I know you've all been completely rushed off your feet and I hope you get the chance to look at the sky and spend 30 minutes on you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.